Hey, there's Megan. Now I feel a lot better. I <laughs> hey, I didn't know if you were going to represent a hat, so I thought I'd, I'd bring mine too if you had yours. Yes, you got to represent your sponsors. You know, smash the sports, Easton, you got to do it all. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> when, you, when you believe in Easton and, you know, Easton is such a good product. I know my first bat in high school was Easton. It's the blue. I loved it. I took it everywhere. Oh, yeah. Easton, definitely. I, uh, when I rep playing baseball, Easton was actually the bats that I always, always swung with. So happy to, happy to be sponsored by this wonderful company. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm with Baseball for All, so I got the Baseball for All rep, which is my nonprofit that I started for girls who want to play baseball, coach, lead, basically who love baseball and want to be a part of it. Right, right. Yeah, you, uh, so you started that when you were uh, you were 23, right? Or that's when yeah, I was, yeah, I was 23. Yeah, I just had my daughter, Jasmine, and I was thinking, hey, if she wants to play baseball, like I want her to live a life without discrimination and just play the game. So I started, and, you know, now we serve about 1,000 girls every year who want to play baseball. And as, as you know, there's now a Team USA that you got to play for. How was that? Uh, yeah, that that was uh, super exciting. Uh, I graduated from college and got an email from the wonderful a Ashley Brewster for USA Baseball and was asking, you know, hey, there's actually a USA Baseball team for women. I was like, oh, sweet. I'm going to do this and went and tried it out. And they liked me and I uh, got the opportunity to represent my country. And uh, last year we won a gold medal at the Pan Ams. So one of my life goals was to always win a gold medal and to do it playing baseball in the first sport that I loved. I mean, can't get any better than that. Yeah, for sure. And didn't you hit a home run at the World Cup over the fence? Yeah, so back in 2016 in Korea, I hit, uh, hit the first one out ever for women's baseball. And then uh, I've, hit a, I've hit a few, but also, uh, if you know, Alex Hugo, um, she was the MVP of last year's uh, Pan Ams and uh, Sportswoman of the Year, and she, she hit a few out, and we had a couple other girls, uh, Brittany Shooting and uh, Jade uh, Gutierrez, who's still playing college softball right now. I mean, the game is it's all about power and hitting. It, it really shows um, throughout the years of us being super successful. Yeah, for sure. The U.S. national team, man. People need to know that there's a women's team. That's awesome. There is. They should go follow them. For the country. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're from everywhere, from East Coast, West Coast. I mean, you name it. Just if you love the game of baseball, I mean, we're here. Just come out and try out. I mean, of course, this year is, is, isn't going to happen. But, you know, all the young girls who inspire to play baseball and I mean, there's somewhere to go. Like, we're here. The women's national team is here. Show us your talent and, you know, who knows? You can be part of the dream, too. Yeah, for sure. I know when I was 13, that's when I was first told I should quit playing baseball because I was a girl. And I was like, no. <laughs> I just kept playing. But it was hard. And like I said, I, with, with my Eastern bat, I mean, I lived at the batting cage. So that 80 just became slow. You know, and then I would sit. I would sit in the top of the box and just, you know, that's just how it, I was able to hit for for high school. You know, obviously uh, the faster I throw, the, the further back. But I was able to just kind of get ahead of the curveball and go. But um, yeah, I know. You know, um, wearing your country across your chest. For me, I got to coach at uh, with Team Israel at the World Baseball Classic qualifier, mm -hmm. and it was a really big deal. You know, I, I get it. I get it. And, and that's probably one of my favorite jerseys next to probably my A's jersey. Oh, wow. um, just just to do that, represent. For me, my family. Right. You, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure your family you, was watching. Are you still coaching now? Uh, I don't have a team this year. Um, I've done some guest coaching in Mexico um, in November. And then I was in, with, with uh, in the Mexican Baseball League there, which was amazing. And uh, I did Japan for as a guest coach in, in some independent league. But mainly, I'm pretty busy with baseball for all and just growing the game. Nice. Yeah. Uh, 
So what kind of advice would you give uh, your girls and your athletes, you know, during this time of quarantine and not going to the field with your teammates? Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, we're, we're doing weekly Zoom meetings. Um, so they're getting, you know, a lot of advice as far as what they can do indoors, what they can do in their front yard. Um, you know, a lot of hitting. I'm seeing a lot of hitting drills because you don't need a big space for that. So, um, you know, you can do that in your corner. I know I used to sleep with my bat and swing in the middle of the night just because I woke up wanting to swing. So um, a, a lot of hitting drills and, of course, um, some band work. And um, those are the kinds of advice. Get stronger squats. There's always things you could do. The stairs, those people have stairs just to get stronger. What, what would you tell uh, people to get ready? You know, it's just that it's definitely a hard time and, you know, can't really get near anybody, but, you know, he work. Uh, if you can throw against a wall, you know, work on your fielding, the small things that really matter during this time. Uh, if it's dry swing in a mirror, you know, looking at your swing, taking a video and then analyzing it. I mean, like you said, getting, getting faster, faster. I mean, it's just trying to do the little things is try and, get just a little bit better during this hard time yeah for sure and you don't need a lot of space to do those little things you can have someone roll to you or like you said bounce a wall um if you've got it i know i still practice my throwing after yep. so i'm not gonna tell you how many years but after <laughs> decades of throwing i still look in the mirror and i still say am i in alignment and, and where do i go and, and just go through that motion constantly working and i don't even play anymore i mean i play in a rec league it's totally fun, you know, but, you know, I still got to be able to throw BP. So, yeah. you know, I think coaches are also trying to stay sharp. There's a lot of coaches looking for the drills, just like you said, and, and certifications and just everyone. How can we get better during this time instead of, you know, wasting it? Exactly. Yeah, that's all you can do. I've seen a bunch of um, college coaches doing these huge Zooms, trying to do these conferences, the uh, you know, find the newest and best way to, you know, develop their players and try to get them better. So it's it's definitely a weird time, but it's definitely a good time for growth for individuals and trying to mature as athletes and just getting better. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot of new community coming in different ways. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think we're spending a little bit more time with people in some ways because of the the Zoom the Instagram and everything, the texting. I mean, I call my dad every day now. <laughs> yeah. I, Make uh, sure he's all right. So that's good. So, yeah. I, just, yeah well, so what's it like being a lefty catcher? Yeah. Um, so it's funny. It, everyone always asks me that. And uh, my college coach, Kathy Riley, was kind of kind of skeptical about you know, putting me behind the plate. But, you know, when it comes to fast pitch softball, uh, there's no difference, I don't think. As long as you got a quick arm, you got a strong arm, I mean, you get that ball down to second base. But, uh, you know, just having the glove on a different hand, that's that's the only difference for me. Um, did but, you ever hit a batter? No, I never did. Nope. And you think about it uh, when it comes to fast pitch softball, now a lot of people steal third, and most bat most batters are right-handed. So, you know, I'm, I'm never going to hit – I would never hit a right-handed batter ever because no one's ever going to third. But, you know, I, I may do. I, all my pitchers to this day still, still um, thank me for framing them balls and throwing runners out. So, uh, I mean, I can't do anything right-handed. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's your only choice. I think I, – I You know, calling a good game, framing – that's what pitchers want. You know, I've pitched and caught, mostly pitched, and then I caught a lot as I got older. And um, I think there's, it's like the best when a pitcher says, hey, can you catch for me today? It's a way to get you in the game. Because so they know that they're getting a teammate, you know, like a true, like, on the same level. Mm -hmm. And they know they can throw what they're going to throw, and you're going to stop it. And that's the best feeling, I think. Oh, yeah. And I, pit I pitched in high school, but when I got older, it was all about catching – but uh, that pitcher-pitcher relationship is definitely one of the most important important aspects of the game because 
if that pitcher doesn't trust you to, you know, frame frame the ball, call the right pitches, then it's gonna be it's gonna be a long game. Uh, Tuesday, the, my pitcher that I uh, went into college with, Libby, we're still, I mean, we're tighter than anything. We're best friends, and we talk all the time, and that's the relationships that you really wanna really wanna build and to have. So, so you're really a role model for lefty catchers. You're basically I, saying lefties can do it. Give them a break. Let them, let them go. If they got a hose, let them in. Yeah, there, there are no restrictions. Like, if you're, if you're a lefty out there and people say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, I mean, I'm, I'm proof that, you know, I'm a power hitter. You can, you can hit, you know, whatever side you want. I, you know, as long as you have a cannon, you throw hard, you're accurate, left-handed, right-handed, it doesn't matter. Just do you, go out. Makes sense to me. Do you is kind of what I've had to do as being the only girl in the league, first woman to coach pro baseball. I can't yeah. tell you how many times people said it was impossible. Every level, from basically 13 on, I've been told you can't play, you can't go. Then high school, oh, you can't try out. Then I actually pitched against my high school, retired a three, four, five, and they're like, Oh, I guess you can. Why don't you come try out? Like, oh, I guess you can. Why don't you come try out? Yeah. Um, so, and then coaching. I mean, I remember I, when I was 16, I said, hey, I want to coach college baseball. And my coach looked at me and he laughed. He yeah. said, no man would listen to a woman on a baseball field. And uh, sure enough, they do. Because <laughs> what all players, all they want is can you make them better? If you can oh, make yeah. a player better, they're going to respect you. And yeah. so, you know, I got to go ahead and coach college and then pro different pro opportunities. But all about if I hadn't just done me, if I hadn't just taken my love for the game and just kept going, then I wouldn't have accomplished it. I would have quit. And that would be so sad because I love the game and I love the opportunities. I got a closet full of major league uniforms. And most importantly, I started baseball for all for other girls so that when they're told to quit, it's like, no, we don't have to quit. There's a whole community out there. There's a women's national team. There are girls playing high school baseball, all those kinds of things um, that are available because of girls who didn't quit, you know? Oh, yeah. And it, it's proof. I mean, we get hundreds of girls trying out for the women's national team and from all over the United States. And they're like, they're like, wow, we're, you know, we're, we're not the only one. There's plenty of girls out there that, you know, don't want to take the softball route. They they love baseball. That's all about. And I'm just glad that they have opportunities like the Trailblazer series and baseball for all. You know, there's there's opportunities for them to keep on growing and just have you know places to go. And they're not just they're not just stopping at you know little league. There's there's more and more that they can do. And uh, yeah, well, and you've really taken a path because you you did fast pitch. And then you switched over and did the national team where you hit a bomb. And then, um, and now you're in slow pitch, you know, and you're an Eastern rep. Mm -hmm. um, you're solid gold. You know, <laughs> anyone would want you. So how has that transition been for you? Yeah, uh, so played baseball my whole life. And then when I got to high school, I made the decision that, hey, I want to go to college, you know, be successful playing softball, get a scholarship get my education and that's the route that I took um, and then graduated and then I was like you know what USA Baseball is here I'm going to go back to my love of baseball and then all of a sudden I met these awesome people and they were like hey how about you play slow pitch and I was like slow pitch and then started playing I was like all right I love this game too uh, so I can just you know crank them out of the park uh, whenever I wanted to, but uh, the transition, you know, it's little little tweaks here and there. But I haven't changed my swing. People in slow pitch say, "Oh, you have a baseball swing," or in baseball, they're like, "Oh, your swing is different." But you know, it's my swing, and I've made it the way I wanted, and it feels feels right. But I mean, I just love I just love all the game: fast pitch, baseball, slow pitch, you name it. As long as I got a bat in my hands. On. <laughs> that sounds good. I tried to play slow pitch 
uh just like right before the you know uh we got locked in i was in a league for a company i struck out a few times <laughs> it's a little embarrassing it does, it does definitely take a lot because if you're not used to you know that slow art coming in it it, it can happen don't worry <laughs> and i was playing third and that ball comes fast oh yeah i'm used to playing third in baseball but you got it feels like you got time. And I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> We're so close to home plate. And yeah. then there's someone like you hitting the ball. I mean, no, no one in this league was like you, but that concept. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Yeah, it's it's definitely, I mean, if you're an in infielder, you better be ready because, I mean, we, uh, we play at the highest level for a major slow pitch. And they get it hard, so I can tell you. You're not yeah, sure. absolutely. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, right. what, we, what we got here? Uh, what questions? Questions, questions. Okay. Uh, well, since we were talking about, you know, this time uh, during the coronavirus, like, how are you doing with everything that's going on in the world? Like, your family? I mean, for me, I really miss, uh, you know, my grandmother's 89 years old. And we were all set to go for Passover and have our big reunion so that we could, you know, say hi. So it was crushing not to be able to, to spend that time with her because she's 89. And, you know, every year matters. Like every year you're thinking, you know, I don't want this to be the last. But um, other than that, I usually work from home. Uh, but our national tournament was canceled. We just canceled it yesterday. So that's a real bummer. Or I should say postponed. Now we're doing it in L.A. in December. Okay. Uh, for all the girls who want to play baseball, you can you can catch up with me. Um, but it's sad. It's a long time to wait to get the girls together. You know, I miss them. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I'm i right there with you. We were supposed to, you know, have tryouts down in uh, Vieira, Florida for the national team. And, of course, the World Cup has been canceled this year, you know. Um, so, you know, all that preparation that everyone has been – trying to and for the last year you know it's put on hold but you know all we can do is just keep on practicing keep better and just waiting for waiting for that date to come back and, you know yeah keep practicing see how you can help other people during this time mm -hmm. you know, a lot of unemployment just a lot of worry you know um how long have you been playing Playing, so just playing baseball, softball. Um, I started playing baseball when I was five and um, kind of started softball around 10, was playing both uh, at the same time. And then, uh, you know, decided in high school that, you know, there wasn't any really path for me to go for baseball. So switched over to softball. College, then, you know, women's national team, now slow pitch. So, yeah, I mean, I haven't stopped. I've just been switching, switching which game I've been playing. Yeah, that's cool. I, I had to stop. So I'm, I'll, I guess I'll admit that I'm 45, which I don't want to admit. But uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, and I got to play in a league just uh, a year ago. I had to take about 10 years off because my leadership responsibilities were just too big. You know, I was just constantly at an event, running an event or, um, you know, at a World Cup as a technical commissioner, or I, at one point I was uh, the head technical commissioner where I was in charge of the World, Women's World Baseball Cup. So finally I got invited to a local league and I got to play. Um, and it was fun. I played in two leagues. One, I found out was uh, like everyone was a former D1, T2 player. So I was actually a reliever because I threw so slow <laughs> that I closed out because you know, the guys would just hit a long fly ball or whatever. And then I found another league that was truly, almost truly co-ed. And so that was a lot of fun. So I'd say I've been playing 30 years, 30, no, 40 years, 38 years, something like that, a long time. And coaching since I was 16, I started learning how to coach, coach camps, then college and so on. Yeah. You just keep on going. Just keep on going till you can't. Never go. give up. Yeah. Till, till you actually, you know, can't actually move your arm up, I think is. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully I got another 20 years in me. I'm only 26, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, yes, you're yeah. young. You're a baby to me. You're a baby. Yep, so we'll see what happens, you know, just 
Uh, we're supposed to play uh, our first tournament in Vegas, the Sin City Major, at the end of May. So hopefully, across many years, everything goes well. Um, hopefully, everything stays on track. And then, you know, season starts rolling. And then just miss, I miss my teammates, and I can't wait to see them and represent represent the good sponsors of Easton and Smash It Sports. And can't wait to put a jersey on again, that's for sure. Keep asking your questions, guys. We, we really love the questions um, because we're here for you. That's right. <laughs> so definitely ask questions. Mm. Yeah. Let's see. You, you got one there you like? Someone says who is a player that no one knows about from Austin. Uh, slow pitch, baseball. I don't, I don't know. Go with slow pitch. Slow pitch? Let's see. Hmm. Uh, Who's the best player that no one knows about? That's a really good question. Uh, I mean, there are so many. I mean, it depends on where, what part of the United States you're from. You know, there's a bunch of great players from, uh, you know, the East Coast that no one knows about. I was one of them three years ago. No one knew about me. But um, what about baseball? Oh, man. That's it's such a hard question. So many good people that I've met over the years that like, you know, small town, small town people. But uh, I mean, I just, I don't even know. There's so many, there's so many good people. Um, I've had a bunch, I've met a bunch of people uh, in the past few years. One of my good friends, um, Shelby Estacado, she was uh, on our 2016 um, women's national team. I don't know if you knew. Um, but she was in a really bad snowboarding accident and she's recovering, but she was, she was ready to play baseball again this year, but unfortunately, uh, you know, life, some, some, sometimes life throws you, throws a catch you and you got to deal with it, but yeah, I'm really excited for her to come play slow pitch with us and all that stuff. But I just wanted to put out there, you know, to everyone say some prayers for her and her recovery. We love her very much and that she has a lot of support from, you know, the women's baseball side and also the slow pitch world, just to, you know, let everyone know that we love her and that we're standing behind her. Yeah, for sure. You know, I often think of like, who would I want to face? You know, like if I could think, go back in time, like how fun would it be able to get in a bat in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League and see what that's like or, like just to stand in on like a Phil Negro knuckleball, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, that would have been cool. Um, so my favorite team is the Cleveland Indians, because I was because uh, I was pretty much raised in Cleveland, and when I got to throw batting practice, um, I um, I threw to the Cleveland Indians first because it was the first time a woman had done it, and actually the Dodgers were like, "Hey, can you throw beforehand?" <laughs> I'm like, "No, I can't." I can't throw because I, I got to make history with Cleveland because it's my team. And um, that, that was really incredible. And my number is number 15, the day my daughter was born. And so Cleveland's my team. Which team is yours? Well, uh, I was born born a Yankees fan, and I'm still a Yankees fan. Uh, I, this is when I have to go boo, boo. It's just right. – uh, yeah. Once the Nationals came around, I'm, I'm from Virginia, so, of course, I, you know, the Nationals was another team that uh, I supported very, very strongly, and they won the World Series last year, so that was awesome. To yeah, that's big. Out. And I'm also big at the A's, you know, because that's where I broke in um, when I got to coach with them in 2015 during Instructional League. So, you know, the A's, I'm always cheering for them, too. Um, great program. So someone really wants to know what size catcher's mitt, I think. What's the best size catcher's mitt that you you mm -hmm. like? Uh, I don't know. I, I always like the smaller the smaller size, which I think I think it's thirty two. Uh I know it's been it's been a good bit since I've uh you know, actually used a catcher's mitt. I don't I don't really catch for the uh, women's national team. I've played right field, DH, first base, but uh, 
I like a small club, 32, 32 and a half is actually my go-to. Yeah, that's good. Everyone needs the right glove. I, I, Easton's got it. I mean, we've talked about Easton's bats, but Easton also got the gloves and the training gear that, that everyone can use during this time. And even I was on the website, like, what kind of home delivery can I have? Because I want to do a little bit more. Um, so, you know, what do you think that coaches can do and organizations can do to get more girls playing? In, in particular, what can they be doing to get more girls playing baseball, do you think? Well, I mean, it's, it's honestly, it's up to the athlete, um, the, the athlete and athlete's family to go, um, you know, go to your local, you know, baseball, baseball clubs, you travel ball teams and, you know, they'd be like, I want to play for your team and uh, all that stuff um, individually. But then you have trail blitz series, blitz baseball. I mean, there's plenty of, plenty of, uh, like smaller organizations out there. I mean, we're we're trying to get there. We're trying to get bigger, better, and trying to get more opportunities for girls to play to play baseball. That's for sure. Yeah, and um, baseball for all is is the national voice of girls baseball. I mean, we're really the leading voice. Um, we go into communities, help them start teams. If you know a girl who wants to play, then you send an email. It goes directly to me. Then I walk you through. Um, how to start a team or how we can get your daughter on an existing team. And so we run four or five events around the country where girls can play baseball with other baseball, with play girls can play baseball with other girls. And then our national event, which this year was going to have 600 girls and we'll see what it's like um, when we have it in December in LA. Um, but if you want to play coaches, if you see a girl who's playing yeah, please, like, talk to the parent and say, hey, have you checked out Baseball for All? And then uh, get them connected to me. And as with Team USA, last year, the last Team USA, nine out of the 20 players came out of Baseball for All program. So that was pretty exciting to see how many girls are sticking with the game. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. let's see. Let's do, let's do one more question. Uh, they asked, what, who's your favorite MLB player right now or all time? I mean, my favorite all time player, like the one I wanted to be was Earl Hershiser because he could pitch because he was, you know, bulldog as they called him. And, and I thought that he just got, had a really good head on his shoulders. So for me, that's, that's what I wanted to be. How about you? Well, I have to go with uh, some of the big lefty power hitters uh, right now. Uh, Barry Bonds by far has always been my favorite player. Um, love this swing. Watch this one up and, you know, so smooth. You got that lefty smooth swing. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with a lefty power hitter. And Barry Bonds was by far my favorite. Makes sense to me. Yep. Well, I think, I think that was a good Q&A. What do you think? Yeah, excellent. I, I've only seen you. You're kind of a legend. So it was a big honor <laughs> for me to get to chat with you and to see where you're going in the future. And um, I know you have big things happening and lots of more home runs in you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hopefully I hopefully got a, a few more left in me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah, well, it was very good to meet you. Uh, stay safe out there and uh, hope to see you in the future. Yeah, for sure. And huge thanks for Easton to bringing us together. And you guys can look us up later on Instagram and um, keep connecting with us and keep the conversation going. Yep, sounds good. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. All right, have a good one. <laughs>